all right guys we're here at one of my favorite streams in virginia um today i'm gonna do a video on uh, just some tips for dry fly fishing if you're a beginner um i know some stuff i'm gonna talk about today i wish somebody had told me getting into it so i'm just gonna take you along with me today and i'll show you how i set up my rod and then as i'm fishing i'm gonna show you little things as i go that i see or pick up on and let you know hey maybe you try it this way or hey maybe try this it'll work a little bit better um I've only been fly fishing about two years, so to say I'm a pro, not at all. I'm still a beginner, but um, I can probably get you going a little bit. Maybe some of the stuff is stuff I wish I knew when I got into it, and just honestly was uh, learning from failure. Just going out, getting my butt kicked, not catching anything. You know, you gotta learn and uh, adapt, and so that's what I did. So, uh, you know, I'm gonna start out with setting up my rod, and then we'll go from there. I'll get in the water and start showing you some stuff, how I reckon my stuff, what to look for, all that stuff. Um, as you're going through the videos, just, you know, if it's stuff you already know, just jump forward. Uh, we'll get on some fish today. I feel confident. So if nothing else, look towards the end of the video for some catches. I'll try to get some good stuff on film. Um, like I said, I am here in Virginia, so if you're local, reach out to me. Uh, hit me up on Facebook, Southwest Virginia Outdoorsman. I got Instagram. Um, chat me up. Nothing else. Maybe I can give you some clues on some places to go. You know, maybe what your stream, what to use, what to throw um all that stuff maybe we can team up go fishing so anyways reach out to me uh make sure you hit that subscribe button and uh yeah let's see what happens today maybe i can help you out a little bit all right guys let's get it all right guys i'm gonna go over how i set up my uh fly rod and line and all that stuff for dry fly fishing um this is for beginners if you're advanced you already know this stuff and you know what you like to use this is for beginners. This is cheap stuff. This is something to get you on the water and you'll catch fish. You don't have to spend a lot of money or have a lot of know-how to know how to do it, okay? So, I like uh, these here, honestly. I buy them at Walmart. Cortland Loop Leaders. Just get you a loop leader if you're a beginner. No sense trying to tie anything fancy on. Uh, I'm using 6X today, but I'd recommend if you're just getting into it, go ahead and go to a 5X. Um, it's going to be a little bit stronger line. You're going lose less fish you're going to uh lose less flies once you get a little bit better with things go ahead and uh drop on down to 6x and you'll thank me later but start out with the 5x same with the line i'm going to use my tippet line um i'm going to be using 6x but uh once again if you're starting out 5x uh as far as tippet material goes this uh powerful x plus has been about the best i have found um it holds up pretty good tippet material is pretty light and if you're not careful when you're dry fly fish if you set the hook too hard you'll bust them off so uh go ahead get this rio power flex plus um i got in 6x if you're starting out just go with 5x um you can always move down as you go now i would recommend it as you get better to go down because you're going to catch more fish it's just a more finesse option there um so like i said if you're starting out, start out with loop stuff. Don't uh, don't be trying to tie nothing fancy. That's that Cortland leader right there, loop leader. Just just loop it right on there, come down. Another thing I would tell you that has helped me out a lot, especially if you're a beginner, instead of tying a bunch of bunch of knots and all. Hang on a second, I'll show y'all. Let me get in my hand. Get you some tippet rings. Get some tippet rings, guys. That's what that is right there. You can buy them offline. And what you do to this is at the end of your leader, instead of tying a surgeon's knot or whatever knot you want to tie to go to your tippet, you can tie your tippet right to that ring. And why that matters is if you're using a lot of flies or breaking off or whatever throughout the day, you're going to be eating up your leader. And plus, you're going to be tying a lot of knots. So instead of getting all fancy and doing all that stuff, just put your uh, tippet ring on just like that. Tie your tippet right to that. And uh, when you get low, once you get down about a foot or so tip it, cut it off, retie on another two to three foot section of it. Um, it saves a lot of time and aggravation, especially when you're hit deep in the water trying to do all this stuff. That's, that makes it or breaks it right there. That's just easy to do. And uh, I haven't seen it affect my dry fly fishing at all. It, it stays flowing. It's very small. It doesn't sink your flies. So I like using those. Um, nine foot leader is, is good. If you're starting out, that might be a little overwhelming. Go ahead and get you some seven and a halfs. And it uh, might work out better if you're getting going on things if you're a beginner. But I like a nine foot. It's kind of the middle ground. Some people use 12 foot. Um, a little long for me. I like a nine footer. 
um, this is besides the point, but I'm using a Echo Lift. Um, it's an eight foot four weight rod. And uh, this is about a medium sized stream here. So it works out good. If you're on a small mountain stream, you know, you get by with seven, seven and a half foot rod, three weight, something like that. Or if you're on a bigger stream, you know, big river, you might want to go nine foot rod for sure. Um, but this is just kind of my setup throughout the day. And as we go, I'll talk about all this stuff as we go and maybe uh, give you some tips and stuff what to do. So just stick with me here. We'll get on the water and uh, hopefully we'll get on a few fish and let's see what happens. All right, I'm gonna talk about one thing right here real quick. Um, if you are a beginner, I'm gonna tell you your best bet is if you know a hole that you're wanting to fish or you know a section like here, I know a section of river I'm wanting to fish. Best thing to do is start at the bottom end of that, the downstream side of that uh, hole uh, section, whatever it is, and work your way up. Especially as a beginner, your best bet is gonna be casting up river. You're gonna get better hook sets. Um, your drift is gonna be way better. So one of your reasons for that is when you're casting up directly above you into the current, your line is going to drift directly back down towards you. You're going to get a perfect drift. As you start easing out, the currents might change as you go. So your current might grab your line and give you a bad drift. And uh, you know, when the fish are hot and heavy hitting dry flies, it doesn't really matter. You can get away with a lot of that stuff. But if they're not, or they're real finicky fish, you're going to have to be on your game. And if that drifts off in any little bit at all, they're not going to take it. Um, so your best bet starting out, throwing up. As you get more advanced, you can start creeping to the side, even down. And a lot of that has to do with your current too. If you're in slack water, it doesn't really matter. You can mend pretty good. But if you're in some pretty fast water, it's just not gonna work out for you. So um, just start down at the bottom, work your way up, always looking upstream. That's gonna be your best bet starting out. So what we're starting out throwing today is a parachute atoms. It's a size 16. Parachute Adams is always a good go-to. It doesn't matter where you're at. It just uh, represents a lot of different flies. Now, while you're on the water, you're going to be looking. If fish are rising, they're rising at something. So keep an eye out. You see some mayflies, some sulfurs, anything like that, try to catch one. Try to catch one in your hand, look at it, match up your dry flies to it. A lot of times, if you're starting out, you don't even know what to throw. So that's kind of how I cut my teeth. And the best thing to do is just get online, look at your area, uh, do your research, see what dry flies to use, what flies are in the water, what time of year, that's another big one. What time of year? Here in Virginia in the winter, you're not throwing dry flies. It's late spring, summer, early fall. That's when you're going to be throwing them. So uh, I can't tell you for your area. Every area is going to be a little bit different. But do your research, go online, look up the stream, look up where you're at, what's around. That'll give you a good idea. But I will say, about anywhere around the states, a parachute atoms is a good go-to. You're just hitting the stream, you don't know what's happening, throw one of those on. It's a good bet. Another thing, if you're not sure they're hitting top, go to a dry dropper. And uh, I'll do a video on the dry dropper, but that's not for today. We'll just do dry flies for today. So let's get started here and I'll talk to you as I go. All right guys, one thing I like to do is uh, before you start using your dry fly, get you some of this stuff that's called ginks. Um, there's other stuff out there, but honestly, this is the first stuff I ever started using. It works good, so that's all I use. Just squirt you out just a little bit on your fingers. You can see there I got it. And rub it into your fly. What that is is just a grease. It keeps your fly from getting saturated with water. That's going to help it float. So get you some of this. It's cheap. Before you start fishing with dry fly, just put you some on there. Rub it on there good. And uh, it'll help you out. It'll help your fly stay drier longer. All right, guys, as you're casting your line upstream, hopefully you can see my fly it might be a little too blurry, but watch. Strip your line in as you go and watch your fly. Keep your finger on it. Because if you're not, you'll get a lot of slack in there. Fish takes it. Look, you got all that slack. So when you cast it up there, cast way upstream like that. Take your line, bring it in like that. So that way, oh, fish hits it. You got them. You're not sitting there fighting with a bunch of slack. So play with that. Now, you don't want to strip it so fast that you're moving your fly. You just want to keep up with the motion of it, just like that all your fly down perfect you want a perfect drift down through there and then when you're at the bottom pick it up it gets you no recast another thing is as you're fishing as you catch fish and uh get in fast water or whatever your dry fly is going to get wet it's going to get saturated so pick that thing up get a several false casts like that that will dry your fly right back off that's what you want just keep doing it that'll dry your fly that booger he's going to start floating again so if your fly is sinking, pick it up, 
give it some false cast there dry it off just like that that dries them right back off and you're ready to go fishing again so there's your two things to keep in mind as you dry fly fishing here is another helpful hint and i'm really bad at this and uh you know what it's cost me a lot but as you're fishing it's easy to walk while you're casting walk while you're watching your fly just working your way upstream man don't do it you're gonna bust your butt i don't know how many times i've done it been wherever just not paying attention walking a little bit next thing you know you're tripped up you're in the water um you break fly rod i break a foot anything <laughs> so take it from me when you're fishing fish and uh if you need to move position there's fish right there if you need to move position then uh bring your stuff in and walk and then recast again but anyways that's the first one off dry fly i'll parachute adams oh got off right here at us that's a little wild brown trout so cool let's get picking here i think we can get on some There's one, guys. Oh, it might not have picked up great. He's in the shade. I can hardly see the take myself, but a uh, perfect example, just fishing straight upstream like that. Um, another thing I was actually about ready to talk about is pay attention where you catch fish or have hits. This example, there's big shade right here, big shade pocket. Um, it's gonna be hot today. It's sunny already, so them fish are hiding in the shade. So just pay attention where you're catching fish. That could be key. And boy, ain't that a pretty brown. Another thing, when you go to handle the fish, Wet your hands real good first. I'll show them off right there. Boy, look at that pretty cool. Beautiful, beautiful fish. You see right there, he took the parachute atoms. Man, what a brown trout. Awesome, guys. Let's get this one loose. We'll keep fishing. All right, guys. I have a hard time uh, talking and fishing, so uh, I'll explain that. Pay attention as you go out through the days. If you're having uh, hits or if you're seeing fish or if you catch fish, pay attention to where you're at where you're at when that happens. Um, just like this there's a little shade pocket now that's the first one of the day so you know that clue us that might clue us in that they're in the shade you know it's gonna be hot and sunny today but it's not quite yet but you know just like that they could be laying in the eddies they could be up in the fast water or they might all be pulled up at the bottom of the run you know you don't know every day's a little bit different so just pay attention as you're catching fish seeing them missing them pay attention where that fish was what was going on fast water slow water was there rock or a limb there was there shade you know and just keep putting it together that way don't just blind cast all the time starting out you're going to want to blind cast but start putting that uh, puzzle together as you go and you start catching a few you'll uh you'll start realizing where they're at where they're laying and where to target so uh just keep that in your mind as you're going out throughout the day Yeah, and there's another one in that shade. Same exact spot. I haven't moved yet. And that one's laying right in the shade. That one might be hard to pick up on. Like I said, when they're in the shade like that, it uh, it's hard to see it. But uh, there you go. Another beautiful brown. That's off the parachute atoms. That's all there is to it, guys. Oh, that was a good take, guys. What was interesting is as I was drifting, you'll never see it in camera, as I was drifting that one down, there's actually a sulfur fly came off the top of the water and uh, took off. So that's kind of keeping us in, stuff starting to happen. If you look there, that one there is Mr. Rainbow Trout. Wet your hands always when you grab them. That one there's a rainbow. Cool. Let's get them loose, keep fishing here. All right, guys, there's another one. So that leads me to another tip. <clears throat> I've yet to step out of my, this spot. You catch a fish, stick tight. There's probably more right there with them. You know, there's probably a reason that fish was sitting there. It leads on to a location deal. But if you catch a fish, just hold tight. Make you several good casts before you decide to move. So that's another one right here. And I haven't even took it, taken a step. So be patient.
All right, guys, you heard me talk about uh, seeing a sofa fly come off. So that's another good tip. Pay attention to your surroundings. See what's going on. You see flies come up, grab one. Try to match it to your uh, dry fly. I found size is more important than color, but still, you can match it, match it. So I seen a sulfur come off, so sure enough, I went ahead and switched on over, and uh, guess what? Old bad boy came off the sulfur dry. They were on to something. Looks like there's a little hatch happening today. So let's keep picking along here. Nice little brownie. Let's get them loose. See if the sulfur is to work. Hey right, guys, this is the sulfur fly here. This is what we're trying to mimic. Might be hard to see. Now here's the flies. Best thing to do is when you get in this situation, try to catch one just like that. Try to catch them. Need a little pull up. There you go. That's what we're trying to match them with. There you go. That's what we're after. That's the sulfur fly. And here's some sulfur dry flies. So just match the hatch. Catch you one and match it to your fly. Alright guys, once there starts becoming a pretty decent hatch, you know, just not one or two, but several of them coming off, um, you start targeting fish. What I mean is you'll see fish rise. 30 seconds or so, he'll rise again and rise again. So you know that fish is actively feeding. So target that fish to throw at him several times. See if you can't get him to come up. So just blind cast on that point, pick you one out, cast at him several times, give him a good chance, and then get to the next one. Um, that works out good when there's a good hatch going on. Here there's a good hatch, but it, it comes in waves here for whatever reason. You'll have a couple minutes, there'll be sulfurs flying everywhere, and then you'll go three or four minutes with nothing. And then you'll have a couple minutes, they'll be wide open again. So right now they're not coming up. But uh, yeah, that's what I'm doing right now is just picking through them. Alright guys, that was a pretty cool trick. Sometimes there's trout there and you know he's there and he's just not taking your stuff. Try to hop your fly just like that. And sometimes it'll work just like that when I hopped it up and uh, he came chasing it and grabbed it. Yeah, nice brownie off the sofa. Alright guys, there it was again. Just let that fly pick it up and let it hop. Sometimes that's all it takes. That one got off, but that's okay. You can see what happened there. Just hop it off and they think it's a fly actually trying to take off from the water and lay in the back and sometimes that's all it takes. Ooh, that was a good take. Brownie. I'd have figured he'd be a little bigger than that the way he came up and smacked it. Ooh. Once again, guys, parachute out and spoil a fish. And then sun here. Pretty one. Ooh. There's one, guys. Looks like a decent fish. Yeah, that's a good one for this stream. There's some bigger ones in here, but they're far and few between. And there's a rainbow, but he's fighting good. There we go. Oh, there it came off a parachute atoms as well. That's a pretty one. Check that joker out. You can see the parachute atoms right in the corner of his mouth. Isn't that a pretty fish? Cool. Take them. That's a good one. But well, he's a better one, I should say. He's not real big enough. That's a better trail. And there at your game, I switch over to parachute atoms. Brownie, nice one. Cool. We'll take them. Number 25. Now 
Dang guys. Might be on to something. That's literally the next cast for Parachute Adams. The reason I did that is I had a size smaller Parachute Adam than I have Sulphur's. And these Sulphur's seem a little small, so I went down size. Here we are. They were on to something. Cool. Let's let them go. Crushed it. And killed it. I was actually about ready to recast it. The fly was a little messed up, but uh, this one here doesn't seem to care. Fighting good, too. No, we got off. Right, another one. There's smoke. Rushed. Keeps it brownie. Oh, then he's back on the sofa. And there's 42. Pretty one. Cool. All right, guys, we had a good day. Caught 45, all off dry flies. So I gave you a few tips. Um, hopefully some of them help. I have a hard time fishing and talking, so that didn't help anything. But uh, save the best tip for last. This is the biggest tip. Get out and fish. Just go. Have a good time. While you're there, don't get aggravated. If you're not catching anything, just switch around. Try to be smart about it and enjoy yourself. Hey, the more you're out on water, the better you're going to get. All right, guys. Until next time.